I have a purple LED. Let's experiment, shall we? And do lots of experiments with it. So this came from AliExpress. It is branded YXO Yuxin now. 220 volt, 50 watt. It's probably going to be available in lower voltage as well. High power UV purple LED, 395 nanometer for basically for printer curing, this 3D resin curing. And I get the feeling this is sold for getting existing uh, 50 watt LED fixtures and basically taking the original white LED out and putting in the ultraviolet one instead. And the ultraviolet one, well, I say ultraviolet, it's deep violet at 395 nanometer. Uh, it um, is probably just the bare chips that would normally be used to excite warm white phosphor, but it's a nice colour, very nice colour. That's one of the reasons I got it. Now, if we take a closer look at the chip, and I'll zoom down this. If we take a closer look at that, we can see the incoming power here. We've got a metal oxide wrist, we've got a bridge rectifier, we've got the LEDs wired as a large series string of parallel pairs that basically go down here, go up again, down here, go up, and just zigzag all the way until they get to the end. But unlike other uh, high power LEDs that have the symbol rectifier and then they've got loads of linear current regulator chips stacked in parallel, this one has a MOSFET, a 4N65A. 4K, and it's driven by the very mysterious L1015 or 358K10, and this chip is doing the linear current regulation with a high power MOSFET. So you set the current sensing, presumably with a couple of resistors under here, uh, and it that will then regulate the power through the LEDs. I wonder why they're doing that. Um, I was going to dig this out, but I thought I'll just wreck it if I do that. Let's do the experiments first. If we take a closer look at the chip, though. We can see that it uses uh, the flip chips. Flip chips are LEDs that don't have the wire bonds on them going to the adjacent pads. They literally have tiny little bare copper pads with the a blob of solder in each, and then they place the chips onto the sort of the solder paste, and it's the bare LED chip itself. No case or anything like that. Just the bare chip literally flows on like a component. They're tiny. I wonder how they get it so accurate. Or maybe that is why they've got these large areas to reduce accuracy because the chip will kind of line itself as it melts. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I am going to bring in the LED and I'm also going to bring in a notepad because I have some capacitors to put in series with this. Let's zoom back out again a bit because I'm going to be bringing the anti. Here is the anti. And we'll hook it up to this. And uh, since I'm going to be picking this up and pointing at things, I'm going to put a pair of gloves on as an electrical safety measure. Rare, but true. So first of all, I'm going to start by sticking these wires in here. They just push in, should push in. They are pushing in. And if you want to release them, you uh, use a gently rounded item and you push down these while pulling the wire gently and it should just pop out. So if I pop this in here, we're going to be swamped with ultraviolet well, near ultraviolet light very shortly. I'm going to stuff those in there, but I am going to put the gloves on. Just generic plastic dip gloves, because uh, when you're working with electricity, it helps to just have an extra layer of protection. Personally, I don't feel I need to at this bench doing this experiment, but I'm going to do it because I feel it is important to demonstrate. And also, I would normally recommend that the heat sinks these are mounted on actually have um, a ground on them because these uh, circuits are a tiny, thin shim of fiberglass. The tip of the finger is missing just for the touchpad. Boop, 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 just to get, you know, stuff done. Uh, other things worth noting, this is a solid-state relay heatsink. It's just one that I had to hand, and the holes on it for the solid-state relay are exactly identical for the diagonal spacing of the LED. That's very handy. Right, tell you what, it's about to get very purple, and I shall plug this in. It's very purple. I'm going to shield myself from <laughs> Look how purple it is. It's mega purple. And it says that everything's lit up in the vicinity. I've got a hat here just basically to uh, to test it with. And it's just basically, it's it's making everything glow. So I don't want to look directly into that too much. Um, I can also feel the heat from it. Uh, 0.89 power factor, 44.9 watts. So let's say 45 watts. And we'll fill in the first value. 45 watts and then we'll put LEDs in the series and see what we get. That does not look bright looking at it. 
I'm going to point it over there. Oh, that is making everything in the room glow. Yes, that is very bright. <laughs> right, tell you what, I'm powering it off now. And then we'll put the first capacitor in line. And this is going to be a 100 nanofarad capacitor. Am I zoomed right out here? I shall zoom out a little bit more. So, technically speaking, this is live and that's neutral. So, I'll tell you what, I'll put them in the correct slot just for the picky people. Actually, I'll put this one in here. And I'll put a capacitor in series. Let's dig out the capacitors. I've marked them all up. A very small 100 nanofarad capacitor. I'm going to put this one... Um, into a Chinese clone Wigo style connector. Straighten that wire up, shove it in there. Click it down, put it into the 100 nanofart capacitor. What do you reckon the power is going to be from this with 100 nanofart in line with it? Are we ready? Let's power it up. It's very dim. I mean, it's not bright at all. It says 0.6 watt. 0.5 power factor. Uh, 0 0.6 watt. That's really very low. Still useful. Hold on. I'm just going to do a scientific test. I'm going to turn the light off. I'm going to take the exposure off. I'm going to get the baseball cap, and I'm going to point this at it. You know, it's not bad. <laughs> you know, for... For... About half a watt. That's really not bad, is it? Okay, tell you what, I'm going to pause momentarily while I bring the light back. So you're about to get dazzled with the light. One moment, please. The light is back. Uh, let's unplug this. Let's discharge that capacitor so I didn't get a little tingle off it. Uh, what have I got to discharge that with? Hold on, just give us a second. Do I have a... There's a screwdriver. There's a uh, security screwdriver. Not much of a spark off that. Good. Having said that, uh, it's still in circuit with this, so that lacked it, like a discharge resistor. And I've disconnected the wrong thing anyway, so let's put that wire in there. And we'll stick the 220 nanofarad in. I'd expect that to be round about one watt, perhaps. So, here is the 220 nanofarad capacitor. We'll pop that in here. This is kind of just really experimenting to see what sort of power levels you could get, you know, if you wanted to just tame it down a bit. Because under running these LEDs significantly, like, say running at 10 watts instead of the 50 watts, it's going to make it last for ages, but still put out a useful amount of energy. 220 nanofarad. It's visibly brighter already. It's 1.27. Do we say 1.3? Let's say 1.3 watt. Per factor of 0.5 again. Okay, because there is the capacitor limiting it. And again, I don't think I even need to... Um, you can see the flicker there because it is basically... It's not smooth. But uh, I can't see the flicker. But it's putting out a decent amount. It's actually doing... Yeah, that's actually not bad. One watt's surprisingly good for that deep violet. A good ultraviolet effect, but not mega. Let's unplug it. Next capacitor is going to be, I think this will be self-discharging. Actually, you know what? Let's just uh, shunt it anyway. It's self-discharging. That's fine. Um, but I'll, I'll play safe and discharge them anyway. Let's put the 330 nano. This is a huge 330 nanofarad capacitor. This is where, if you're bored just watching me do this, you could just basically jump to the end and see the results. It's your call. 330 nano, looking a lot brighter. It's now, let's say, 1.95. I'd say that's close to 1.9 watts. Okay, 1.9 watts it is. Could just say 2 watts, but I'm going to say 1.9 watts. And that is going to be very visibly bright. Yeah, I can see it glowing, even in the studio light, and I can see where well, you can see the shimmer off it, just at the side. That's very good. Unplug. Unleash capacitor. Shunt capacitor, anyway. And we're on to 470 nanofarad now. Which is an unusually small capacitor. 
just depends on the manufacturer and construction. They vary in size quite a lot. Uh, 470 nanofarad. Brighter again. Looking pretty good in the making this pop, this hat. It's very visible. Uh, 2.7 watts. Okay. And then... Actually, I'm just going to unplug this, right, this, right, just to show you that it does hold a charge if you don't. And it just made a mockery of me by not making a loud crack noise. Okay, I just pl unplugged it at the zero crossing point then. Excellent. Just try dabbing it across. Let's go to, uh, let's plug unplug this this time. And let's go to one microfarad this time, which I would expect to be about five watts then, based on what we've done so far. So let's plug it in at that. I might even parallel two up. Very, that's actually making the hat light off camera. That's pretty good. Um, it's six watts. Five point, well, 5.9, let's call it 5.9. Watts. So actually it doesn't take too much capacitance. I'd kind of like to get a 2.2 megafarad capacitor. I wonder if I've got one. Uh, I shall go and look for that. One moment, please. I did not find the capacitors I was looking for, but I did find some motor uh, run capacitors. Let's cut these open. Let's rip them open and pop them out. These are from CPC in the UK. Uh, this one is rated 4 microfarad, which would be about... 4 microfarad should be about 24 watts, shouldn't it, theoretically, at this rate? Could this be an interesting way to tame them down? Just use motor capacitors. And this one is 2 megafarad, so it's going to tame it down to about 12 watts, theoretically. Let's find out. I wonder if these have a discharge resistor. I don't think they've got a discharge resistor. And this is uh, shady, because these will deliver quite a bang. Okay, dokie, I shall test that. So I shall get a bit of wire here. This will do. And I shall get this wire and hook it around one terminal like this. Just temporary connection. And the other wire shall be hooked around the terminal like this. Again, a temporary connection. And let's see what happens. If I stuff this into this terminal here and plug it in, what are we going to guess? So this is 2 meg fired motor capacitor what do you reckon is it going to be 12 watts let's find out the power is 11.5 watts 11.5 watts that is actually starting to get a very useful level of ultraviolet while also extend the life and you could fit this capacitor in the case now to test this if this has a discharge capacitor resistor should I say I'm going to short it out, but I'm going to uh, basically just disconnect it from here first. Do not do what I am doing. And that should have left a charge on if there is a... Uh, hold on. There was a bit of a pop there. Not much. I shall test it. I'll, I'll make a note down below in the description if there is uh, a discharge resistor in these. I'll disconnect them and just see if the voltage goes down at a modest rate. So let's get the next connections on. So this is the 4 microfarad, and that is theoretically going to run the LED somewhere around kind of half its rating. That would be quite useful. And these motor capacitors are very common, and you don't have to worry about them going short circuit, because the worst case happening uh, if they went short circuit is the LED would just go up to full brightness. So I shall pop this in here. Place your bets. What's it going to be with 4 microfarad? Very bright it's going to be. That's really making everything light now. And it's 23 watts. So that's effectively rendered it 4 microfarad. I'm shielding my eyes from it here. Equal. Uh, let's say 20, it's 23.7. Let's say 24 watts. That's interesting. Uh, that's going to half the power dissipation from this LED. Oh, I didn't check the power factor. Hold on. Let me just check that. 0.5-ish. 0.58. Yeah. That's what I'd expect. So all worth doing those experiments. They were interesting. I shall just discharge capacitor. It should have been discharged because of the uh, it was in circuit with that. But there we have it. Uh, the ultraviolet LED dubbing it with capacitors. Here are the end results. Very easy to tame it down.
And in a suitable fixture, uh, that would just be a great way of getting a long-lasting LED that still put out a fairly decent power, but the LED chips would last a lot longer. So that was a, that was a good experiment. That was well worth doing. Kind of want to build that into a case now with the uh, with an actual capacitor just to see how that uh, how that works. But there we have it. Uh, do being an ultraviolet or a white LED just for prolonging LED life in a very simple way.